Picinus Ranch is 7,600 acres. It's got six miles of the San Benito River flowing through it. The vineyard itself is only 25 acres. The majority of the land here is actually pretty much in natural condition. We are certified organic. There's no tillage or cultivation. We need to stand back and say, what does a healthy system look like and how do we create that? The type of work we do allows you to produce food in a way that doesn't have negative impacts on people in the environment. So it's not just banning pesticides, it's creating alternatives that are, that are real alternatives, that are viable, that are scalable, that work for growers, and that's economically feasible as well. My inspiration for this vineyard was studying with Alan Savory on how to restore ecosystem health using livestock. So the first system I developed allowed sheep to graze in a vineyard throughout the growing season. The second iteration of that was just of raising the vines higher, which is what we've done here, so that the sheep could graze in that, but also so we could provide shade for both workers and animals and create a cooler climate inside the vineyard itself, which would help increase diversity from the soil up because microorganisms are a big part of the biodiversity. Generally speaking, you have a positive relationship between increased agrobiodiversity and the provision of ecosystem services, whether it's nutrient cycling, pollinators, weed control, biological control, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The key word there is generally speaking, right? The catch is that it's very idiosyncratic. It's very specific to the system and the organism. And growers wanted to know how to do this habitat diversification thing. They were looking at attracting beneficial insects to enhance biological control of leafhoppers. This is the primary pest that they wanted to know how to manage. And when we looked at the parasitoids, these are a very important group for leafhopper controls. What we saw was that the presence of suitable overwintering habitat for the anagris parasitoids was higher in the more diverse landscapes and that it really drives down leafhopper populations. We ended up setting up a comparative study between our vineyard and the neighboring vineyards. We had much higher numbers of both um, parasitoids and predatory insects. And both of those are what you want in a vineyard because those are the things that are going to be controlling your problem insects. And we had pretty similar numbers in both herbivores and sapsuckers which is interesting because they were probably using some type of insecticide to control theirs and we were using nothing. We have some leafhoppers in here and we've, I've even seen a little bit of damage, but they never get excessive. When we see a few, it's, it's not something to be too alarmed about. What I think is really important is this idea of um, stacking ecosystem services. You know, growers not just managing leafhoppers, they're managing all these different things, diseases, weeds, et cetera, that effectively changes your kind of risk reward calculation. You know, we found a, a really wide diversity and abundance of different native bees on the flowering cover crops. Grapevines don't need pollination services, they're self-pollinated, um, but it's conserving native bees. That's the number one question in the tasting room. What are you doing for bees? It's stuff that brings value. It may not be directly affecting the agronomic aspect of that crop, but there's value there. One of the things that's been really exciting is seeing all of the, a, a large number of native plants returning to the site and often are very beneficial to the native insects in this area. We've gotten to a point that the ecosystem health is kind of self-generating. So some of the native plants that we have growing here are manzanita, Coyote brush, Ceanothus, California fuchsia, chaparral honeysuckle, silver lupine. We all partnered together with Dr. Dina Marinlender to look at bat activity across this gradient of vineyards that were in landscapes with lots of habitat all the way down to landscapes with very little habitat. What we found was that bat activity was greater at the vineyard edge compared to the interior and then generally it was higher in the more diverse landscape. So there's again, there's conservation value, just like we have with the wild bees, but there is the potential for the bats to be consuming some sort of arthropod that is considered a pest of vineyards. And you could extend this argument to birds as well, and people have been looking at bird activity uh, in vineyards and, and even linking that to, again, the insects that they might be consuming, and if they're consuming enough of them to potentially lead to a decline. 
Improving the sustainability of agriculture is a whole food system endeavor. For farmers that are interested in, and all should be interested in, increasing their biodiversity, one of the simplest things they can do is, is work towards eliminating all of the pesticides they're using. And that's because pesticides have a negative effect not only on the target species, but also on other species as well. And working towards building your soil health and allowing diversity in the forms of other plants in your cropping systems are the place for people to start.